Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will be introduced to the one of the most important secondary memories, hard disk drives. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now, during our last session, we observed that the secondary memory storages can be broadly classified into two categories, the removable auxiliary storages and the fixed auxiliary storages. There we also learnt about all the different removable auxiliary storages. As promised, from this session onwards, we will start learning about the fixed auxiliary storages. And particularly in this session, we will be properly introduced to the fixed auxiliary storage, hard disk drive. Now, hard disk drives are available in two different form factors, the 3.5 inch one and the 2.5 inch variation. The 3.5 inch hard disks are specifically used in the desktop workstations, whereas the one with the 2.5 inch form factor is used with the laptop computers. Now, allow me to invite someone special who will introduce us to the internal architecture of the hard disk drive. And ta da, he is here. Alright, so this is how the hard disk drives look like internally. This one here is called the disk pack. Now, why is so? As Captain America himself illustrated that, this is a collection of multiple platters or magnetic disks, which are put one over the another. Now, specifically in this case, we have three platters, and as you all can see, the surfaces of each of these platters are divided into concentric circles, which are called the tracks. If observed carefully, see, the tracks of the different platters make a cylindrical formation. And that's the reason why the tracks at one arm position, that is the tracks, all the belonging to the different disks, if they are of the equal diameter, they are called cylinders. Due to this reason, the number of cylinders is actually equal to the number of tracks in every hard disk drive. So, the surface of every disk is divided into tracks, and the tracks are again subdivided into sectors, just like floppy disks. So, these all small portions are the sectors. Now, usually the size of each sector is actually 512 bytes, if not mentioned otherwise. Now, if you remember, during the session direct memory mapping, we learned that processes are actually subdivided into pages, and each sector is generally capable of storing one page. Following this convention, the standard size of every page is at least 512 bytes. Additionally, the size of the sector is the smallest unit of data that the hard disk is able to transfer to any other peripheral. Now, in order to find out the capacity of one disk, we have to first consider the number of tracks of the disk. Multiplying with that the number of sectors in each track will give us the total number of sectors on that particular disk. Finally, Multiplying the number of bytes stored by each sector with the total number of sectors, we will acquire the capacity of each disk. However, we are unable to use the full capacity of the disk due to the memory occupancy of the intersector gap, also known as the format, which keeps track of the various informations like the sector number, track number, whether the sector is full or free for use, etc. Thus, a significantly small amount of memory is wasted due to formatting. Now, in order to read data from the disk or write data on the disk, there is a read-write head. And to read or write, the head needs to move from one track to another. Now, the time taken to move the read-write head from one track to another is called the seek time or TS. Suppose, in a particular instance of time, we are either reading or writing on this sector. So, naturally, the head will be at this position. 
Now say we want to perform a read or write operation on this sector. For this, the mechanism of the drive will rotate the disk and will bring the sector within the reach of the read write head. Now the time required for this rotation is known as the rotational delay or TR. Well, in one rotational delay, the read write head can read the entire track, that is all the sectors of the track it's currently positioned on. So the average access time of the hard disks can be measured as the seek time or TS added with the rotational delay TR plus T data transfer which is actually the time taken to transfer the data. Now while solving numerical problems, if TS, that is seek time is not explicitly mentioned, we are to assume that as zero and if TR, that is the rotational delay, is also not specified, then we will generally assume that TR is equal to half of the rotation time. So this is how we are going to calculate the average access time of hard disk drives. So in this session, we learnt about different form factors of the hard disk drives. Thereafter, we observed disk pack, tracks, cylinders and sectors. We learnt the relationship between the sector size and the page size. Then we learned how we can calculate the capacity of disks and we also learned how due to formatting, a small yet significant amount of memory space gets wasted specifically for the intersected gap called the format. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will solve some numerical problems pertaining to the concepts that we have learned in here. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.